move on to our next myth, uh, another favorite of all. Uh, and uh, people have been doing this. I've been hearing this term, you know, uh, 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 pretty much everywhere. Um, if uh, whether they are diabetic or not, whether they want to lose weight, they were, whether they want to be and stay healthy, uh, the term uh, in the air per se, intermittent fasting, is it good or bad or how does it work medically? So there is, uh, Shira, there is uh, mixed data on this. However, the evidence is not conclusive that intermittent fasting really works. Um, at the end of the day, like I have been saying in my previous episodes, it's about calories in versus the calories out. It is about the number of calories you consume in a day. In an intermittent fasting, uh, the 16 is to 8, uh, you know, that um, the ratio that people follow where people are not eating for 16 hours and then they can eat uh, whatever they want to during that eight hours, I'm not sure if that really works because in that eight hour period, the guidelines do not specify what you can eat, how much you can eat. And if you are eating loads of pizzas and burgers and you're eating uh, salads with fried food and you're not really watching, you have probably even out your calories or even exceeded more um, than what you should be eating to lose weight. So long-term it has not shown uh, if it really is uh, working for people to lose weight, but maybe for a sect of people, if they're really mindful of what they are eating during that eight hour period, um, and then they're really not eating for that 16 hours, maybe it, it, you know, it could be a little bit fruitful, but I don't see, but medically there is no data on this uh, long-term. So, uh... So that's about intermittent fasting. But my question, something arose in my mind uh, about fasting as such, you know, uh, this is this has been in air for a very long time uh, that, you know, doing, I mean, you, if you fast uh, for a certain period of time, maybe once in a week or once in, once in a fortnight or once in a month, or, you know, is there any benefit to fasting as such? So <laughs> I want to take you back to the very first question that you asked, that is starvation and skipping meals to lose weight. Right. And I think that would be the answer that, uh, no, uh, it does not, Sharad, because, uh, you know, many times you, you fasted for so long that now you're just craving food and maybe the bad food. So uh, I, I don't think it really works. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Because of uh, I mean, people attribute it to a lot of you know. Sometimes uh, they fast. If you are a Hindu, you fast for a, a particular day and things, and maybe once in a while is fine. Uh, or or per se, if you're if you're on Rosa, you do things. But but but, but that is their uh, uh, belief there. But 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 in general. Uh, uh, as you say, fasting is not a great idea. So we have right. busted. And, you know, for Hindu religious festivals or Ramadan, people are doing it for the religious um, reasons. That's that's different, and that's okay. Uh, but if the agenda is to lose weight uh, because of those activities, it's probably not going to work out in the best. Um, you know, it's, it's really, they need, to, people need to know, our viewers need to know that they need to be looking at their plate. They need to be looking at what they're eating, how much they're eating, the knowledge about calorie counting, um, the knowledge about being able to maintain that deficit, that 500 calorie deficit is so important. A lot more air have been cleared now. Uh, we'll move on to our next myth about this this one as well. I've uh, been lately uh, hearing this uh, everywhere, uh, especially the diet junkies, ketogenic diet. I mean, is it good or is it bad? So again, you know, ketogenic diet, the first of all, there is mixed evidence. 
and no conclusive evidence at the end to support that it really works. Uh, in fact, I felt from my patients, a lot of people have done this and they come and tell me that they they did it for two months, they three months, they couldn't continue to do it any longer because it's not sustainable for them. And it's true. I mean, think about you eating just fats and proteins day in and out with no carbs. You know, that's just not sustainable such is not the human body, you know, such is not our palate. We need all our macronutrients as well as micronutrients. We I can't be eating just chicken and egg and, you know, fish every day, a day in and out. So that's one issue with it. Two things uh, that uh, go with keto diet is because there's so much fats consumption in that diet, many, many people have reported having high cholesterols or lipid panels after doing that diet. Um, one thing is that with the diet, maybe it helps you keep fuller um, for a little bit longer because proteins are also an important part of that diet and proteins take long time to digest. Um, however, uh, to say that it's really helping you lose weight now and long-term sustainability of losing weight, um, um, it, th there is no evidence uh, for that. You know, many times, Sharad, you know, these things may work very quickly for people. Uh, they think that it could be because of keto diet or some whatever diet they're following. But the truth is that, you know, they are focused on weight uh, for that that little bit of period they're trying, they're looking at their diet, they're doing their physical activity and everything. And they have lost some weight that they wanted to. And three months later, they have gained everything back because they couldn't sustain that or they couldn't continue those right habits. So sustainability, building those right habits is so important. And that's why I keep saying that we should be trying to eat whatever we eat every day whatever we eat because of our ethnicity because you know i am from the north india so i eat certain kinds of food you know you are from the east so you enjoy certain kinds of food and wherever we are from you know we should be trying to eat as we have grown up things that we like but right amount right kind of food and that's just so important thank you right so you so you're saying that you have to hit that uh, note of uh, being in moderation you always heard that phrase, you know, uh, how much that applies in diet. Right. Yep, exactly. And, and once you build that habit, you can continue that because you love the food that you eat. You're not just bringing in some, uh, you know, X, Y, Z diet just for this quick fix. For our Mana TV International audience uh, uh, to maintain a, a balanced, healthy lifestyle, uh, tell us, uh, I mean, give us more tips about a sustainable diet so that, you know, they can imbibe uh, these tips uh, in their daily lifestyle and not have any apprehensions about eating right or wrong or what's going to happen and things. Right. Um, and, you know, I'm going to say the, the same thing that uh, continue to eat um, what you eat every day. But look, look at your plate. Look how much calories that plate form. For example, if, for example, say that you have now determined that uh, I need to eat 1500 calories in a day to start to lose weight. In my mind, that means that I have to have a 300 calorie breakfast, a 300 calorie lunch, and a 300 calorie dinner with uh, maybe another two, 300 for snacks. So I'm gonna eat like, my usual breakfast is like, you know, eggs and toast or maybe cereal. So, uh, you know, or oats and I'm gonna look at, okay, I'm gonna have one slice of toast instead of two slice of toast, you know, or maybe two slice of toast with one boiled egg instead of a fried egg to meet that 300 calories. I would have probably a bowl of oats with skimmed milk and some fruits to meet that 300 calories instead of having one full cup of oats and a whole milk and lots of raisins to make it more than 300 calories. Does that make sense? So that would be my breakfast. You know, if you're having idlis and sambars, I mean, maybe go for like two or three, you know, small to medium idlis with sambar instead of also having chutney or instead of having like five idlis and sambar. So 
that is so important, you know. Uh, same for um, lunch, you know, maybe you're having a piece of uh, grilled chicken, uh, maybe a four ounces piece of grilled chicken and some salad. Uh, please do not add a lot of uh, mayo and ranch and things like that to just outrun that 300 calorie limit. So that kind of knowledge is so important, you know. Um, and then maybe for snacks, you need to have some, a little bit of, um, you know, half a cup of popcorns instead of having those fried chips. Uh, maybe having um, one fourth cup of dry fruits or just an apple instead of that, you know, like lots of peanut butter or something. Like peanut butter is really good, but you know, <laughs> That disparity um, and then the same thing for dinner um, you know and when you're having a dessert instead of having those sweets or cakes maybe having a piece of chocolate or dark chocolate or maybe one or two dates or prunes and things like that so it is still that we are eating our food the thing that I eat every day um, um, you know but just in the right quantity and um, and then the right quality. I mean, for me, Sarah, when I was in, in college and when I was young, I've tried like so many different kinds of diet. They, 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 they may work instantly, but they're not sustainable. Um, and, and now that I have learned and I've realized what really works for me, and that's what I teach my patients as well, is eat what you eat every day, but eat in the right quantity. You need to know when to stop. You don't have to eat till you're filled to the, you know, top. You need to stop just before you're starting to feel full. And that's when your stomach will learn to adapt to, you know, your hunger and your bodily needs. Right. Well, thank you, Dr. Yeshi, again, uh, being uh, very kind uh, to me and our audience uh, by uh, answering wonderfully about um, you know, these, these diets and uh, how the dynamics of the diet uh, should be uh, at any given point of time, uh, especially to lose weight, uh, which is the crux and core of our discussion. And uh, I had one more uh, myth to discuss, but uh, one thought as well came to my mind. Uh, you you got to tell me whether this is a myth or not. I've heard this quote and phrase that you have to eat your breakfast like a king, your lunch like a common person and dinner like a pauper or rather even skip your dinner and things like that all the time. What is your take on that? Um, you know, Sharat, uh, that does not necessarily work for everybody. You know, some people you know, do night jobs. So for them, their breakfast or what, you know, that would be dinner for a lot of people really starts at 8 p.m. Um, and, you know, it, it does not matter at what time of the day you're taking the biggest meal. Uh, but what really matters is how much you're eating throughout the day. Um, and the breakfast um, in general for most people, I just feel, um, you know, could be the first big meal uh, as it's the, for most people, it's the first start, you know, of the day and you're just starting and it keeps you feel fuller for a longer time and maybe can help reduce the needs for um, you know, your, your lunch and your dinner and snacking and things like that. Thank you. Thank you. Because that has been on my mind and a lot of people, and this has been like a fancy quote, uh, which has been in the air all the time for a very long time, probably uh, pushing back to decades, even centuries. So I just wanted to uh, ask this age old question. So, and uh, uh, thanks for that again. And uh, we'll go to our- Funny, I wanna make it, I wanna say something like uh, on that note, you know, a lot of people can relate to it. Um, <laughs> My mom, she keeps nagging my dad because he loves having a really large dinner. 
um, and he's not like a very much a lunch person. So, so she thinks that because he's having a really large uh, dinner, um, it's it's not helping him out in his you know in his process of aging and his chronic diseases and stuff like that. Uh, but but that's not true, you know. <laughs> My dad has maintained his weight throughout because even though he eats a, a little bit more dinner, he is maintaining with it, with his breakfast and lunch. He's not eating a lot with, with those meals. So you see the point I'm trying to make, uh, it evens down to the number of calories you're eating at the end of the day. instead so, of. So, you are, so, so it bo again boils down to the calorie accounting, how you are, you know, how much, I mean, these, the, uh, the number of calories, which you have, uh, with the, the set amount, if it is, uh, you know, that criteria is fulfilled, then probably you can. And your personal choices and habits, like some people like more dinner, some people like more breakfast, some people like more lunch, bigger, you know, whatever works for you. But, um, but I was just uh, saying that breakfast might be a good option to go for a big meal because it is the first um, meal of the day. Um, so for hopefully for most people that would work, but that doesn't mean that they have to follow this, what I'm saying. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much uh, for, for clarifying that one as well. Uh, we're uh, finally at our last myth. Uh, and I've, I've heard you uh, saying uh, uh, in the previous answer that you got to you know, you got, you got to be determined to do certain things with diet and things probably, you know, have uh, healthy habits, uh, work around schedules and think uh, properly, be wise. Uh, but my question here is uh, uh, about losing weight. I mean, I mean, I'm not taking it, uh, taking mental health in consideration, but does it take grit, determination and willpower to lose weight how much is mind over matter <laughs> <laughs> that, that is actually a difficult question but uh i want to say that um you know obesity or when you have put on a lot of weight it is it is not something very simple most of the time where i would just advise people or my patients that here, this is it. Like you need to follow this diet. You need to follow this exercise or physical activity. And there you go. It's not that simple because it is a very complex neurohormonal process. The way people lose weight or gain weight changes with time, changes with diseases as well. So we need to account for that. We just can't be blaming people to you know, to, to the point that they are feeling guilty that it's because of them that they have gained weight. And that certainly doesn't help us in giving them um, management solutions to lose weight. So we can't just doing this blame game thing. However, um, you know, there are certain medical diseases like thyroid issues, which can put on weight for people. So we need to be screening patients for that. There are also cortisol. Cortisol is a hormone that can be released uh, because of stress or because there is a, a, an organ uh, that's called as adrenal glands uh, that's situated above the kidneys. If that gland is hyperfunctioning, it can reduce, uh, sorry, it can increase cortisol levels and that can put on a lot of weight. So we should be screening for all of this. We should be screening for stress. And uh, before just simply advising patients that they are, need to be watchful of their diet and um, um, exercise. Uh, the second thing is we should also be screening uh, people for mental health issues like depression, uh, anxiety, or binge eating disorder, or night eating syndrome. So um, binge eating disorder is an actual disorder where people uh, do not feel the sense of satiety the fullness, they just eat a lot. Uh, and and, and this, this, is, this is real. So we often screen people for these mental health issues and uh, through a psychologist. So it's important to screen people for that as well. 
And then also for genetic and familial uh, abnormalities like issues like Prader villi and barded beetle, MCR4 gene mutation, these are all uh, only a few issues that I've just stated, genetic uh, issues that can put on weight for people. So, so as healthcare providers, we need to be cognizant uh, that we should be looking at these things as well um, uh, before just simply saying that it's diet and exercise. Um, however, I wanna end by saying that um, to a lot of extent, the onus of losing weight, once you have eliminated all these things that I have said, the onus of losing weight does fall on you, um, you know, because 80% is diet, 20% is physical activity, once we have ruled all these chronic issues out. Um, and if you have been able to do that, then, then that's great. And many times, like we discussed in our previous ep episode about the medical management, we have drugs that are out there that can help you lose weight uh, with the diet and exercise. Uh, we have surgical options that can help you lose weight. So it's, it's a combined effort. But the, but the things that people can do themselves, that's the diet and physical activity, uh, that's important. Um, and to some degree, that does take determination and motivation. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Because this was a uh, much needed uh, answer and uh, guidance and clarification for all of us, because as I said, today's topic is debulking uh, the myths about uh, uh, losing weight. And uh, uh, I mean, one of them uh, on the minds of everybody is this one about willpower. And, uh, and as you said, 80% is diet, 20% is physical activity. And, you know, only, only then you can attribute to your will and you know it's your responsibility how you work around in your mind uh, because uh, I've, I've, I've known we have we have all faced these things when, when people who have no clue about uh, how you actually gain weight and uh, those who are actually facing problems with obesity are posed with questions or just loosely uh, suggested that you know, and, um, why don't you take care of yourself and things without actually knowing knowing these uh, complex details of what goes into all these things like genetic makeup and familial problems and things uh, beautifully elucidated about, uh, you know, how to, uh, you know, take charge of, uh, you know, your weight uh, in your own hands, considering all of these uh, dynamics and putting it back to perspective and square one and actually, you know, having a wonderful life ahead without having mental health issues um, pertaining to uh, obesity. And uh, you wonderfully answered uh, with the panel, uh, me and Minal uh, about, you know, a lot of uh, burning questions about obesity, losing weight, diet, and so many lovely topics uh, which are addressed in these uh, series of eight called Obesity Care with uh, Dr. Kanika Yeshi. Really thankful to you uh, for uh, you know, giving us this uh, expert guidance. So uh, give our Mana TV international audience, I know you'll, we will be definitely back with uh, uh, vocational episodes as well in the future. If they have questions, we will come back uh, with Q&A sessions uh, uh, pertaining to the questions of audience, uh, please guide and give your uh, final message to our Mana TV international audience about losing weight and obesity care. I just want to say that first, acknowledge your weight. Acknowledge or know whether it's a problem or not. Because knowing the problem is the first step to starting to take solution. So know your BMI, understand whether you are overweight or on the heavier side or fall in the category of obesity. Know that obesity is 
a disease. It's a medical issue. That is why we are sitting here, the medical experts to treat obesity, okay? I want to say that diet and physical activity does play a big role. So please look into your diet, look into your food habits, how you're eating, what are some of the steps that you can take uh, that I have explained in my previous episodes. What are some of the kinds of physical activity you can do? What are the recommendations regarding physical activity that you can take, which also I have mentioned in my previous episodes. And know that now there are a lot and lot of medications that are out there to treat obesity. So please seek help. Please talk to your family care pr practitioner. Please, please talk to an obesity care expert who can possibly guide you uh, in addition to the diet and exercise and lifestyle to a nutritionist, to an exercise coach, or maybe prescribe medications to help lose weight, maybe refer you to a surgical center, a bariatric um, a surgical center to help you lose weight. Um, so that's my uh, message for people who are trying to look into their weight. Thank you, Dr. Yashi, for enlivening this series of eight with your wonderful subject matter expertise, lovely humor, and staunch wisdom. It was a real pleasure and breeze for me and Meenal to host these eight episodes with you and hoping to have a comeback with you with some more grander and beneficial topics on obesity care. And I'm very sure our audience have enjoyed these series as much as we did and will take full advantage of the education provided in these sessions on obesity care. So dear friends, we're finally concluding the last episode of our coveted series of eight called Obesity Care with Dr. Kanika Yeshi. And I'm very sure Dr. Yeshi's genius guidance have been instrumental in educating all of you toward a greater understanding on obesity care. We thank Dr. Kanika Yeshi for being such a wonderful subject matter expert and have shed lovely light on great topics on obesity care. We as well thank our panelists who have come to some of our sessions on obesity care. Do write to the email scrolling on the screen if you have any queries and questions, and we will get them answered by Dr. Kanika Yashi. We recommend you to watch these series in their order of chronology, that is episode one through episode eight. If you liked our series, do write to us and we will get back to you as soon as we can. And please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and Facebook page, Mana TV, and also watch us on live streaming Yep TV. I sign off as you enjoy obesity care with Dr. Kanika Yeshi. Thank you. <laughs>